Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gaming Today.com video. Let's discuss an announcement which has just happened that AMD will be partnering with both Oculus and Dell to be producing Oculus experienced based PC systems. Now, for those of you who are not too familiar with an Oculus uh, ready PC, it's very simple. In its nutshell, it is a system that is pre-configured to be able to give you a virtual reality experience out of the box. It will have the right hardware, it will have all of the right software, and in a nutshell, all you have to do is just plug it in the wall, install your games, and you're good to go. So once again, AMD are now partnering with both Dell and Alienware to provide a Fiji-based GPUs. Now, why are they going with AMD? Because there are actually a lot of other solutions and even NVIDIA themselves are listed typically for the minimum requirements for the GTX 970 or in an AMD based GPU, it's an R9 290. So why, why AMD? Well, it's actually quite simple. In this respect, it's down to AMD's GCN architecture and also AMD's Liquid VR. Now, we have covered Liquid VR, what it is previously, but it is pretty much a middleware. It's a middleware API that allows direct control over between the GPU and, and the actual headset. The purpose of this is to reduce the latency, motion sickness, and because it's actually bypassing the, um, the operating system, you can actually get much better performance when it comes to multi-GPUs indeed. Liquid VR has a, uh, a special mode, I guess you could say, with multiple GPUs known as Affinity Multi-GPU. What this effectively will do, let's say you've got two GPUs, it will split the workload per eye. <laughs> Not joking. So one GPU, let's just call it GPU A, will deal with, say, the left eye. GPU 2 will deal with the, or GPU B, will deal with the right eye. And because of this and because of the low latency um, experience, theoretically, you're going to get considerably better performance, considerably lower lag. This is mostly down to the, um, the compute scenarios, of course, with the asynchronous compute architecture. And the main benefit of this uh, technique is that Generally, when you're running SLI or let's say Crossfire, you have sometimes latency, variances in latency between one frame or another. And this is known as stuttering. It's common even, of course, in a single GPU where you get, say, variances between the CPU or the GPU load or what have you. I mean, hell, your antivirus could choose just that second to fire up. However, with multiple GPUs, it's fairly infamous and most of you know about it because it's known as alternative frame rendering. So because of this you have to wait for one GPU to complete a previous frame and it, it can be a bit of a problem, particularly with virtual reality. Imagine the level of nausea that you would start experiencing if your left eye saw a slightly different frame to the right eye. You might overlook it say once or twice in say a 10 minute session but if it was consistent particularly in action sequences it would not just be immersion break breaking it would probably be vomit inducing not good so with this new technique affinity multi gpu multiple of these fiji cards can therefore be utilized to split the workload and even better than that according to amd themselves it minimizes cpu overhead by what it does by that is Let's say you have a common operation between the left and the right eye, or in these cases the GPU, it will mirror that data. So you don't have to have the situation where the GPU is telling, sorry, the CPU is telling both GPUs the exact same instruction. Because after all, if it is the same scene, much the same scene, but with a slightly different angle, it doesn't necessarily have to tell it, hey, you know what you have to do? You have to basically redraw this entire scene. It, you know, it just it doesn't make sense. So it's, it, it's quite a logical uh, way to go if you can basically reuse uh, instructions. Now, what we do know is, of course, the virtual reality is going to become a really big deal over the next couple of years. Everyone knows that. Um, how well it's adopted to the mainstream gamer really comes down to a couple of things. One is software. In other words, how easy is it to utilize? How easy is it to get games running on it? How easy is it for you know to for bugs, drivers, all of those things such as compatibility? Really big deal after all. If you can't get something that bloody well works and it causes rage levels, the type of which you've not seen 
back before bloody Mem Maker with uh, MS DOS, most people are not going to go through the hassle. It's that simple. So it has to be easy to use. It has to be very compatible. Hardware, same deal. It has to be powerful. It has to give a good immersive experience. But once again, you don't want to be jumping through hoops to say, hey, I need this GPU with this, this particular you know processor with this particular headset with this particular it, it's going to become a mess and the average public are just not going to go through that that stress in my opinion what we do need is a good collaboration between multiple companies to say this is virtual reality ready this will work with this this will work with that and as much as i don't necessarily support um alienware and those companies i'm not saying that in a negative way i'm not having it against alienware or dell you know, they do great monitors, for example. But I personally prefer work building my own system. That's just my opinion. I realise, however, some people are uncomfortable with that. Some people want the warranties or they don't have time or what have you. And for those people who are just saying, hey, you know what? I just want to buy a bloody system that's off the shelf. And these virtual reality, I guess, entry level systems. And I don't mean that in a negative way because it is Fiji powered. It's not like it's being powered by a toaster. You know, these, these systems where people could just grab them off the shelves and just kind of delve right in, it makes a lot of sense. So, I'm all for this. Um, now, that's not to say NVIDIA are not working towards a liquid VR alternative. They are. Uh, it's going to be implemented with Gameworks as far as we understand. However, for now, possibly for the foreseeable future, AMD might have a bit of an advantage with the liquid VR. Maybe it's a little bit further along. It does appear to that. Anyway... Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.